Hello and welcome to the Phantom 4 RTK workflow tutorial. We will be covering both the real-time kinematic workflow and post-process kinematic workflow. Sections include mission planning, field operations, and processing in ASP Suite. Differences you will notice between the two workflows includes the base station, timeline of the image tagging, and file structure. RTK processing requires a DJID RTK2 base station, while PPK processing requires a third-party base station, or a virtual base station, such as a core station. Images will be tagged in real-time during the flight when using the RTK workflow, while PPK workflow utilizes ASP Suite to tag the images post-flight. Also, the file structure of the two differs, as the RTK files are all located on the micro SD card in the drone, and the PPK workflow will require the SD card, Rhinox file from the base station, and an Opus coordinate. First step to planning a flight with a Phantom 4 RTK is to open up the controller and power it on. Next we will click on plan, 2D photogrammetry. I'll now navigate to where I plan on flying this mission. I'll now set a flying height. Shooting mode can be either time or distance, but we choose distance. Set it to return to home after the finish. Go into the camera settings, have it 3 by 2 either sunny or cloudy. Average metering mode, gimbal angle of negative 90, shutter priority set to 1000, and distortion correction. Then in advanced settings, we set side overlap 70, forward overlap 80. Margin setting manual. We now can tap on the screen to set the parameters of our flight. As you can see, it automatically displays the flight lines. That yellow circle in the middle there, we can use that to adjust the flying angle of our lines. We click save and give it a name. The first step to using your Fan4 RTK is to set up the base station. For the RTK workflow, you will use the DRTK mobile station. For the PPK workflow, you will use a third party base station or a virtual base station. You will now set up the drone. You will need the Phantom 4 RTK remote control, and four propellers. The propellers are designated with either a black circle or a silver circle. Props with a black circle go on the motors with black dots. The props with a silver circle goes on the motors with no dots. Now open your remote control and power that on. Then place your drone at the takeoff location and power it on.
To use the RTK functions, go to the RTK settings and turn on Aircraft RTK Positioning, and then select RTK Service Type as DRTK2 Mobile Station. To begin flying, press and evoke, start, read through your precautions, let the flight upload, then slide to execute. For PPK flights, go to your flight plan. If you get a weak RTK signal warning, make sure your aircraft RTK positioning is turned off. To begin flying, press Invoke, Start, read through your precautions, let the flight upload, then slide to Execute. After sliding to Execute, the drone will now automatically start the props and take off. When the mission is finished, the drone will land and cut the props automatically. All right, now that we've finished our flights, we can now dive into the processing in ASV Suite. First, we're gonna look at the RTK processing. This first thing that we'll do is we'll open up the uh, location of our mini SD card. And here's what it'll look like when you plug it in. You'll have your DCIM folder and your miscellaneous folder. Just go into DCIM and then go into Survey. And here you'll have all your separate flights. If you click on one, you'll have all the images here, and then at the bottom of it, you'll have your eventlog.bin, pbkraw.bin, rhinex.obs, and timestamp.mrk. Now let's go into ASP Suite. We will have our workflow tab open right here, so we have create project slash flight, open project slash flight. In tools, we have our edit flight and then other tools that we will not need for this process. So to start processing, let's go to create project slash flight. This first step here is just this uh, setup of the project. So we have our ASP projects root folder. This is where we'll be saving all of our projects to. Then we have our ASP suite project. You can set this up so that, for example, I have my Phantom 4 RDK flight folder here and I'm going to use this for multiple flights so I'm going to be doing a PPK and an RTK processing so both of them will be part of this Phantom 4 RTK flight project and then I'll go into flight name and I'll separate them for PPK and RTK so let's say you're on a job site and it's going to take multiple flights to cover the entire area you can have the name of the area here and then the flight name, so flight 1, flight 2, flight 3, so on and so forth. And then you have your flight type. You have your post-processing kinematic and real-time kinematic. So first we'll go into real-time kinematic. We select that and then go to next. And we're going to upload our images. First we'll see you'll have an image time zone selector here. That'll be um, for where the images were taken. We'll add our image files. And just like it was set up earlier, I just moved it over to this part of the computer. We'll have all of our images here, so we'll select them. And we'll have our image file name, our group, so let's say for example you want to upload multiple uh, flights at the same time or there are multiple flights part of one um, folder of images 
Uh, you won't have to worry about that with the Phantom 4 RTK, but uh, you can separate it to have each group be separated by a total number of minutes here. You know the time in which it was taken in UTC, and then the local time. Latitude and longitude, along with your height, latitude accuracy, longitude accuracy, height accuracy, and then the location of the files. And if you click on one, you can see the image preview. So now that we have them loaded in, we'll go into next. And here you just have your output settings. You can do ellipsoid, geoid, or local coordinate system. For this example, we'll do geoid 12b. We'll go to finish. And then all we have to do is do solve auto run. Here we go. The images are tagged to geoid 12b height. And you'll see the folder that they were named to. Okay, now that we've finished RTK processing, let's take a look at PPK processing. Everything's going to look the same. Starting off, we have our workflow in our tools tab. Let's go to create project slash flight. This tab is the same, but uh, since we already established a project, we'll do add a flight to an existing ASB project. We'll select our RTK flight, and then change our flight name. PPK. And then this our our flight type will be post processing kinematic. We'll go on next and then our our images like previous. We'll open those and all these fields are the same. Click on next and now this is where things get different. We have a rover page here. It starts off by selecting our map interface. We have a selection here specifically for the RTK PPK processing. We'll go and add our observation file. So this is going to be our base station file, or actually our um, our .obs that came from the Phantom 4 RTK. And here we have a little success window. It confirms that the observation file covers the same time as the period of selected images. Then we select our timestamp file .mrk. This will be in the same spot. And then we have our drone settings. So our drone is going to be Phantom 4 RTK. We have our MEP offset and our antenna arm offsets. If for some reason you need to change any of these, you can click override defaults and then change them, but they come in automatically. Next we add our base station observation file. We'll click the ellipses and here we have uh, wherever we saved it, our .o file. And here, same thing as before, our SBF and our observation file covers the same time. Then we have to put in our base station location. This is where that OPIS location comes from. So we have read from OPIS text file. And then here, we can go and select our OPIS text file. So if you export your Rhinex and then submit it to OPIS, get the email, then save it to a text file, It'll be able to read the location automatically. So here we go. You can also do select from base station manager. This happens after you save your location. So if you, let's say you put it in for the first time. And then you go to this green plus mark right here. Here you can have a new base uh, station. So you can name it, have a description, put in your spatial reference system well-known text, location settings, uh, you can put in the location here. You can change it from meters, USV to international feet. 
and then of course you can manually enter it if you'd like. Then you have your base antenna, base antenna height checked, ours is 2 meters, and then your base antenna calibration. We'll go to next. Here we have our ephemeris page. So ephemeris mode can be post-processed or broadcast. We're going to go with post-processed here, so it's going to be downloaded from the internet automatically. You can go and you can uh, manually input an ephemeris in an alternate navigation file if you'd like. But if you auto download after selecting your GNS settings, it'll only take it a moment to put those in automatically for you. You can choose either only GPS satellites or GPS plus GLONASS. We'll do GPS and GLONASS. Click auto download. Very shortly, the files should appear. There they are. We'll click next. Then we have our final step here. You have your GNS settings, your elevation mask, and your SNR mask. I usually leave these where they are. Your interpolation settings, you can auto remove ground photos and events. Update image headers. And then your output transformation. So this is the same as before, plus these three extra settings. I have these checked, and then I usually leave these at 15 and 30. And usually I don't convert base station observational file to Rhinex 3.0. Now that we have everything in there as we'd like, we click finish. And this is going to be a five step process. The first step is already completed. We have imported our files. Next is the file conversion. You can go step by step if you'd like, but normally the quickest way is just to select solve auto run. And then up here, it's going through the observation file. We have our Q equals 1, which means that we have a fixed solution. If it's Q equals 2 or Q equals 5, that means it's not fixed. Usually, Q equals 5 happens whenever uh, we process out in the field, because at that point, we won't have a base station file in there. If we get Q equals 2, there could be some kind of um, disruption in the uh, the reception to the antenna and you can go and change those elevation masks in the final step of processing. We're bolt tagging the images. Now everything's complete, we can go in diagnostics and take a look at the data. So we have two .pause files here. We have our Rhinex events and our Rhinex. Here we're going to have all of our positions, recorded positions. What we're looking for is for as much of this to be green as possible. Green uh, signifies that it is a fixed point, fixed solution, while yellow is Q equals 2. And Q equals 5 will come up as red. We have one point here, but that's at the very beginning. That might even be a ground photo. And we have all of our images here. There are no gaps. Uh, there's no wild points anywhere. We know that everything recorded correctly. Now that we've checked our diagnostics, we know that everything's good to go, and you can move on to the next step of your processing.